thank you to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your support helps keep the lights on. Find out how you can become a Patreon supporter or YouTube member in the description below. What's going on, my kitsunes? It's your favorite retail fox, Foxy. Come back at you with a brand new episode of the O-Town Dragon Lake. And in today's brand new episode, we're going to be cat... Well, we're actually going to be expanding the industrial district, but you're actually going to be noticing something in this episode that's going to be really interesting. And it actually does take a while to actually build correctly. We're actually capping the highway that runs through the um, industrial district and by the downtown area. And there actually is a pretty good reason why I'm capping the highway from one end of Midtown to basically the other. And it's actually kind of a big movement that's been going on for quite a while, actually, in a lot of places out here. Most notably, Interstate 5 in Seattle, there's that huge um, Cap I-5 project. And a lot of the cities that are actually capping their freeways are trying to build, like, park space over it. You know, make everything walkable again, which does make a bit of sense out here. For me, though, I think personally, the reason that I'm doing it is try to unlock some more buildable space, especially in a city that, um... I don't want to be that guy, but this city is absolutely, like, positively giant out here, too. But it's also in such a very, very, very tiny area of actually buildable land. So we kind of had to work with what we got in that situation. I mean, there, you can only do so much land reclamation out here. So, yeah, capping the freeway is definitely a nice space-saving solution for a city like this. Because I have a weird feeling we're going to be hitting the other side of Dragon Lake fairly soon. So that's going to, again, limit the um space for the midtown that's going to limit the space for the suburbs out here and that means you're going to see a lot of people kind of like you know building up and not out in some cases down though as i said before you know you got that um capped freeway out here and i really wish there was a way for me to put buildings under the freeway too because i know in los angeles they do that particularly under i-10 i, I kind of go look it up or kind of like you know flash a shot of it right now but one i don't want to spend the extra time editing and two you know like, it, it, it would just cause a bunch of noise with the keyboard, which I really don't want to do right now in the post-production um, commentary out here. But yeah, you could actually look it up if you're really curious. There's actually a bunch of buildings that are located underneath Interstate 10 in Los Angeles. And I think it's actually the cool. It's actually pretty cool. You know, you got that nice little space-saving solution out here. And if there's an exit ramp right nearby, you have a shop under I-10. Perfect, actually. You know what I mean? But yeah, a lot of people probably wouldn't want that noise out there too, so that's not really a viable solution in a lot of cases. LA did it though, because again, you know, they, they kind of have a limited space out here too. There's actually some maps of LA City that have recently gone viral. A lot of people, they zoom into LA, they're on Google Maps, they're like, oh, hi, you know, all this giant area, this all must be Los Angeles. But it turns out if you actually look at the area that um, constitutes LA City, yeah, you're actually going to see a very different map out here, too. There's a large chunk of the metropolitan area that actually does not want to be part of Los Angeles here. So, um, yeah, that's going to be fun. But, yeah, you can actually see me building the first sections of the um, capped freeway right about now. Capped highway, whatever you really want to call it here. Yes, we are capping the highway out here, too. Want to know why we're capping the highway? Again, we want to unlock some buildable area because, let's be real, again, the land real estate to build a city like this is very very small right about now i mean on one side you got a giant like you know sea out here so in a way you could say this is like a coastal city even though i'm not really sure if it's like an ocean or something like that i think you can only really call it an ocean if it happens to be a coastal city and then on the other side you got a giant lake out here too it's like trying to sandwich a city between the atlantic ocean and lake okeechobee in florida oh wait there's already a city that sort of has this confinement problem its name is miami kind of forgot about that and trust me that city's traffic like it just absolutely suffers from its confinement but unlike miami we can actually like you know cap our freeways without the risk of them flooding because well this is kind of a video game like in the real world though it would work very differently especially if we had like a limestone foundation and a high water table and trust me you don't want to deal with a high water table i will publicly guarantee that right about now you do not want to deal in a million years with a high water table that's just going to be an absolute pain in the tail hole to deal with and not in the good way either and yes i will always say in the good way whenever i say pain in the tail hole because listen i'm a pan furry fen boy what do you want from me okay i mean i built a giant pan pride flag in the previous episode for crying out loud but anyways right about now we got a few other things going on at the moment we got some big oak trees coming up right about now because you know we want to have some green space between the um, walkway because it turns out capping the freeway does actually take a little bit of space off the city but not near as much as um if you were to say i don't know 
completely put the freeway above ground, like like elevate the freeway, for example, I, I feel like this is still a far better solution. You're losing a lot less space overall. And on top of that, too, it's also walkable space that you're gaining, too. So you actually got that um pathway right next to the highway or, or next to the avenue right there. And I think it actually does look pretty good. And yes, I did invest the time to actually detail everything. Yes, I also built a Tesla factory. Have fun with your cars that are going to break down. And yes, they are made by an idiot. I mean, it's Tesla. What do you expect, man? The amount of times I've seen the full self-driving, or the amount of times I should say that I've heard of a story of the full self-driving completely failing and killing someone. I, I wish I could say I could count them on one paw, but unfortunately I can't. There's been countless incidents. And on top of that too, I, I don't really, I'm going to be, I'm going to be keeping a buck with you. If I were to get a car and it were to have like, you know, full self-driving, one, I want that full self-driving to be in release mode. I'm not a developer, and I'm even if I was a developer, I would still be kind of like, you know, I, I still wouldn't trust a full self-driving beta of all the things. Like, that just sounds like a way to get sued in, like, in an instant out here. But on top of that, too, I, I really just would not... I, I would just be very skeptical of it. I, I wouldn't trust Elon Musk, of all people, with it, too. Because let me tell you right now, he's probably, like, the last person I would consider worthy of my trust when it comes to um, self-driving cars of any kind here. And trust me, he's done a great job demonstrating that over the past few months out here, too. But I'm not really going to touch that topic of discussion out here, too. All you need to know is, if you've ever used Twitter, you know exactly the problems right now that um, that man has caused on that platform, and you're probably never going to buy a Tesla as a result. And you know what? I'm in that camp, too. I'll st like, I'll gladly stick to gas guzzling if it means I'm actually I actually get to my destination alive and not, like, you know... I, I don't get ended by the full self-driving out here because I, I just don't trust it. And I don't trust it from the person who released that beta out here, too. But anyways, we're getting done with the Tesla factory. We also got a few warehouses right nearby. And you better believe we're going to keep building some warehouses. But to end it off, too, I figured I'd build one of these tech parks out here, too. And by the way, I'm just going to say it right now, those four buildings actually looked pretty good to, to, to go together as a tech park. I know they're technically the same building. But at the same time out here, you know, I, I know what a tech park looks like, okay? I've been in one multiple times. I mean, I've even been inside of the Eli Lilly corporate headquarters in real life out here, too. So, yeah, I know what a tech park looks like. If anyone could build one, it's me out here. But anyways, we're starting to get pretty close to the end of this episode, so I'm going to go ahead and start doing my song offs here. If you did go on to enjoy, you know what to do. I will see you guys next time. Take care, bye for now, and have a great day or night. No matter where in the world you may.